All right, everybody. Welcome to today's stream. What I'm going to be doing today is um, I'm going to be basically drawing and narrating my way through my drawing. Um, just kind of a quick little sketch um, for me to wake up. And um, I think um, I think uh, I'm going to basically I'm going to be drawing a big barda, mostly because. Um, I like the colors, uh, I like the variety of materials, <laughs> you know, enables me to do something f fun looking. And without further ado, let's get it started. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Eh? Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be using uh, my usual uh, simple square brush uh, for setting up shapes because <laughs> whenever I begin a piece, I want it to be very loose, I want it to be done in large uh, areas as I feel my way through it. Now, <laughs> my method of work uh, nowadays uh, when it comes to these streams usually consists of me just kind of free forming a thing and just um, feeling my way through the um, body language of a character, you know, until I'm happy with what I have and then I take it from there. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, I'd like to apologize for my um, Tourette's. Uh, it does sometimes uh, make me re react in some vocal tics like these. It is unfortunately something I can't really do anything about. So it is what it is. Kind of a take it or leave it situation. So if it bothers you, by all means, move on. Okay. Now, um, this method of work, the no sketch thing, um, it's not it's not your ideal professional approach. It is, however, a good uh, decision making training because um, any kind of artwork really is a step to step uh, course in making uh, visual decisions. You know, <laughs> so as such, um, you know. It often can take a very long time until you make those decisions. It it it, it can, in a way, um, lengthen your artistic process uh, to you know, to un unmanageable um, lengths. Really, you know, uh, it it will um, as an artist, like you, you will often find yourself questioning your decisions, questioning your choices. You know, what if I did it like this? What if I did it like that? Um, the, these practices uh, help alleviate some of that by kind of making you do very quick decisions on the spot. Now, um, it's not easy. This isn't this isn't you know your beginner's technique. Uh, this isn't something where you're just gonna jump into it. Like you gotta know generally what you're doing. You gotta know your anatomy. You gotta know, you know. <laughs> you gotta know uh, some basis of body language before you truly can uh, commit yourself to this. <laughs> so um, that's the unfortunate side effect of this process. Uh, however, once you actually have those covered, um, I do highly recommend uh, this method as a way of practicing. Uh, <laughs> both your uh, you know, decision making and uh, a lot of other stuff uh, this this will also do wonders for your um, ability of visual storytelling <laughs> by um, making you uh, more completely understand the movement of your characters the energy of a pose energy of a gesture <laughs> so um, once you've kind of done your basic um, understand, once once you've kind of gone through your basic understanding of um, anatomy and uh, you know, you're ready to take things to a next level, well, it's it's not a bad choice to it's not a bad option to kind of go in that direction and um, give it a try. <laughs> there. 
Still, um, in order to get to this level, I can't uh, overstate this enough. Uh, use references, work from references, learn from references. Um, you don't get to uh, learn anatomy without, you know, learning from something. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, you can't just make up a person without knowing. Uh, how it all functions, how it all works, you know. Another approach, uh, another advantage of the approach of doing things in big, big, uh, simple forms is from the get go, uh, your corrections are very easy to do. You know, you can course correct uh, if you see your drawing leaning more towards uh, one side or another, which is also why flipping the image is uh, very important when you're actually going into proper drawing of things, you know, because. Um, given your dominant hand um, and your dominant side of brain, you we do have um, a tendency to kind of lean our work towards one side or another. <laughs> and uh, flipping it around <laughs> makes you see just how far, you know, you've, uh, you've lost the axis of everything, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see me use the same approach um, on her face as I as I've used uh, on the rest of her. So <laughs> um, I am freeforming her expression, freeforming her face, freeforming everything because I've spent about twenty plus years of practice, you know, in drawing uh, people, drawing comics, and uh, trust me, I wasn't able to do this from the get go. So this is something that does come with time and intense uh, practice. <laughs> uh, and uh, it does result in you knowing, um, uh, you know, how do you translate uh, planes? I guess planes of the face. You know how a face, uh, what a face looks like uh, making a, a certain kind of an expression, you know. <laughs> you know you know where to fold them and where to hold them. Because <laughs> uh, that's one of those things. Um, another advantage of this approach is because you're working in large shapes, uh, you're more free to actually um, embrace uh, the structure of the face, you know. Uh, because when you're actually drawing a person, let me show a quick uh, <laughs> um, mock up on another layer. Let's say I'm, I'm actually drawing her, so I'm going to actually draw this expression, you know. Well, when you're drawing, you're kind of, um, you're going into details of an expression, you know. And the um, problem with that is um, you never get the proper feeling of uh, what it's going to look like because <laughs> when you outline uh, a wrinkle, it automatically ages a character because you don't get the full image of it all. So you don't really understand um, mm. what the final result is going to look like. And uh, in fact, it tends to make you more fearful of, uh, you know, 
engaging in uh, with the, with the expression in any relevant way. You know, um, I've seen a lot of artists who are very, very, very much afraid of the nasolabial folds here that happen. You know, around the nose, around the cheek. You know, <laughs> um, and um, these these folds, these uh, <laughs> wrinkles, <laughs> they are they're the they're the fund fundaments of uh, any strong expression. You know, <laughs> like. Um, you can't make a believable expression with if if you keep excluding those, and uh, when you can't make a make a believable expression, well, you, your result your result is, you know, you're drawing or painting a bunch of really bad actors who can't uh, emote for shit, <laughs> and um, you know, I think a lot of it comes from the fact that um, as artists, we tend to get really uh, self-involved at some point uh, in a way of going, you know, <laughs> oh, I, I, I've learned how to draw an attractive person, a man or a woman, doesn't really matter. <laughs> and it's like, you're so self-impressed by that that you don't want to stretch that out further. It's like, it's like this person looks pretty with their face kind of just looking to the side. My God, look look how pretty they are, you know? <laughs> you've learned how to render that. You've learned how to shade that. And it just looks pretty, you know? <laughs> But here's the thing, you know, it's like you realize, like, oh, if I start making expressions with this face, it's not going to look as good or, you know, mostly because you're still not used to properly rendering things. You're still not used to properly grasping the essence of, of an expression. So the result is uh, less than ideal. <laughs> and um, that's always going to be the res result once you get out of your comfort zone with your character. Like you have to, you know, <laughs> you have to take that step because, yeah. It's going to look ugly. It's going to look weird. It's going to look so one way after another way and, and another and another. It's just going to keep looking kind of bad. But over time, it's going to keep looking less and less bad. And um, you're going to start understanding, you know, every little thing that you're doing wrong. And then you're going to start, um, you're going to start uh, polishing up that stuff. You're going to start uh, improving on that. <laughs> You're gonna start understanding that you know the wrinkles around the nose and this this little wrinkled up piece of flesh you know underneath the eye when when a person is frowning or laughing is not there to make a character look ugly it's there to make the expression look believable you know and uh, <laughs> once you get that all of a sudden you know <laughs> your characters are no longer just kind of sitting pretty on on those canvases you know there's they're, they're they're, they're ripping all they're themselves out of those canvases. They're they have energy. They have power. You know, <laughs> hell, they have seductivity. They have uh, nuance that comes from more than just you know looking pretty. Um, that's also where you'll find the heart of all seductivity in your characters is uh, in the fact that they can emote. For instance, in this case, nothing would be easier than for me to make a pretty big barda. But you know what? I'm not going for a pretty big barda. She is pretty. She is a beautiful woman. But she's a beautiful woman that's capable of um, expressing emotions, expressing her you know, emotional states through, you know, through her facial expressions, through, through changes of that. And, um, you know. In this case, I'm more interested in not so much as into a pretty in, in a pretty big barda. I'm interested in a fury, you know. So I am focusing on that. <laughs> <laughs> and with that in mind, you know, I'm embracing every every element of the face, every every uh, muscle group, every uh, segment of her expression. And uh, they're all going to be working together to give you that impression. She is not here to fuck you. She is here to fuck you up. A very important distinction that's often forgotten. <laughs> Also, God bless anybody, the person who invented liquify filter. 
it's so much faster to just kind of move things all around than to erase and redraw. <laughs> and I would know. I used to be a traditional painter. So this, this makes all the difference. All right, let me take a quick peek at the chat here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I do have art station, but I'm really, really, really sporadic at that. I don't really uh, bother uploading there too much, <laughs> mostly because, uh, yeah, I'm mostly a comic artist, and uh, at the same time, uh, you know, most of my work uh, is either stuff that I don't feel too strongly about or stuff that I just don't think belongs on the own art station. <laughs> I haven't read Mr. Miracle. I do intend to. That's the sad thing about, uh, you know, <laughs> being a comic artist. You don't really get to have the time to actually read a lot of it. flip it again and get that expression and get that face back where it needs to be oh okay. i made the helmet on the next layer my god i'm iq 200 let's go And now at this point, I am good to start refining my piece. So <laughs> I have a general idea of uh, what I want it to look like. I have my expression, I have my energy captured. And now <laughs> I'm going to start uh, using multiply to lay in my stronger shadows where I need them. Uh, I'm going to start separating forms strongly. And I'm going to then turn to blending uh, of shapes. Do I still play Destiny? Yep. Mm. 
launch this. Uh, okay, what's on this layer though? Oh yeah, that was when I was just demonstrating. Uh... <laughs> now it looks like a meme face. <laughs> All right, uh, let me see. adjustment hue saturation I'm gonna saturate a little bit Now, I'm often asked uh, if I could recommend some exercises, some practices. How do, how do you learn, you know, mm. facial expressions and stuff like that? Um, I find that the best uh, way of learning is the animator's way of learning, as in have a mirror on your table, make some expressions, try to draw them, mm. um, try to apply them on different things. Um, but... Um, Another very simple way nowadays is take a bunch of selfies making expressions and then um, try uh, take those expressions, line them up and then start applying them on different things, on a human, on an animal, on an inanimate object and then just keep trying to apply them on things and see how they land. <laughs> you know, do it enough times and I guarantee you it's going to start sticking. You're going to start memorizing things. Uh, also, I would highly recommend uh, studying, you know, um, like anatomical, um, um, like charts of uh, facial muscles so that you know what's actually happening when you make a face, you know. So basically taking, um, taking a photo of yourself making an expression <laughs> and then taking a, an anatomic, anatomical uh, picture of facial muscles and then mapping those onto your own expressions just so that you see, you know, what's what's making it all you know what's making it tick And now we start blending it all in, getting those forms mm. <laughs> together. Um, my blending brush solution is um, something I've made about 15 plus years ago, back in the old days of digital work. <laughs> and it's been working well for me. Um, I know that nowadays people have made their own variants of, of it uh, and you know, they, they like using, you know, spattered brushes or painterly brushes or stuff like that. And they do work just as fine, just as well. Uh, what I mean, what I want to say is the reason why I'm using my own, that's basically just a simple hard round brush is um, it allows me to blend while keeping strong hard edges on things where I need them to. So if I press like this, I can pull and then I can just, you know, um, blend in the shape uh, the way I want it to and I always have a full range of control over it. <laughs> Still, 
that's not saying that other people's versions won't do do just as good of a work. It's just that, yeah, for my fast uh, method of work, I really need all of the control I can get as fast as I can get it, you know? <laughs> uh, also, the piece I'm working on right now is rather small. I'm not really... Uh, doing anything for th this for any other purpose than just kind of waking up in the morning, uh, getting my mind into a working state. So I'm not trying to make anything overly, you know, large uh, so that I have to worry about smaller and smaller and smaller elements and details. So this way I can just kind of <laughs> stick to the important stuff. For anybody trying to learn facial expressions also, I can't um, state this enough. Um, <laughs> pay close mind to the lower eyelid and pay close mind to when uh, the gums are visible on an expression. <laughs> Believe it or not, those two elements are stupidly important to landing your expressions. Ten more days, eighteen more days for what? Oh, oh, for the new Samsung. Yep. All right, first the uh, square brush. As you may or may not have noticed, I have a stupid amount of brushes, and that's just. Uh, 
It's just the ones that I bothered to save over time. <laughs> I tend to make a lot of brushes on the fly as I need them, and then later on deleting them. side on the environment but I guess I can just lazy it and presume that there's a blue skies up ahead above and let's say that there's like <laughs> something illuminating uh, maybe maybe it's kind of a sunset thing and So those are going to be reflected in the front facing parts. <laughs> Maybe she's just really, really pissed off at this explosion that's happening in the distance because she she wasn't cool enough. So she looked at the explosion and just nobody nobody took her seriously anymore. It was like you you did what? You looked at the explosion? Don't you know that's a big no no? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I kind of want to have illumination come from that side. So let's see what happens if I do some uh, more intense uh, overlays or vivid lights or stuff like that. <laughs> Sometimes it's cool to experiment, not with a normal mode though. Yeah, uh, this is uh, pretty much what I'm interested in nowadays in a piece. Um, I'm not interested in a character that's just, you know, kind of standing, sitting pretty. I'm a storyteller. Um, standing and sitting pretty, it's it's all nice, you know, it can, it can work for an illustrator, but I think that's a very important distinction to make. Um, I'm trying to tell stories with my works. Uh, predominantly, I'm a comic artist, so, you know, goes with the job description uh, but you know when I'm drawing a, uh, when I'm even painting a single piece like I I, I want it I want it to be a captured moment in time you know 
This is one of those things that's like, oh no, let's say Scott is in a giant fucking explosion caught by Dark side of, or me, Dark Side's Omega Beams or something, and she just saw him get evaporated, you know? Well, it's all about catching that moment. Because, like I said, once you've drawn uh, enough people sitting pretty, can they get bored of it? You want something more. Mm. Also, I always like to reinstate that, um, you know, never take anything that I say as, you know, the one truth, you know, it's like, it's not, it's everything I say on my streams, everything I say on my videos pretty much comes from um, my own personal experiences as an artist, you know, <laughs> uh, but keep in mind also, I am a self-taught artist, so all of my mis uh, experience and are based on, you know, years and years of my own mistakes. And, um, you know, also, I'm a comic artist. I'm a storyteller. Um, you don't necessarily want to be that, you know. <laughs> Let's say you want to be an illustrator. Let's say you, you really want to make uh, drawings of people sitting and looking pretty. That's perfectly fine. You're not doing anything wrong by doing that. Uh, when I say I don't like it, I mean I don't like it for my own work because that topic doesn't interest me anymore. <laughs> Like when I see just a pinup cover of you know let's let me let me draw a pretty looking girl just standing there, I, I die a little a little on the inside. And when I get told uh, to draw such a cover by an editor, I die a lot on the inside. <laughs> so you know, like I'll draw that if it has a meaning, but otherwise it's just. Ugh. But again, you know, personal experiences and personal feelings about things. All right. Now, you see me using multiply over the whole thing here. And that's mostly because um, it's a nice lazy way for me to uh, regain control over my values. Um, I don't want uh, I don't want everything to be overexposed. I, I I want I want to have a certain degree of control of you know where I want my whitest highlights. You know where I might want my little peaks of. Um, Because um, managing your your highlights is um, mm. it's something you you should you, know, yeah. you should um, how do I put this yeah. you should control you should um, always try and control your highlights because you can uh, you can achieve great effect emotionally yeah. with just a few well placed highlights like me right here. You get the idea immediately, you know, but if I had the whole thing exposed as it was before, well, it would kind of get drowned. And again, this is not me as a, you know, I'm not telling you this as, a, as an illustrator, I'm just telling you this as a storyteller. As a storyteller, uh, you can do a lot of storytelling with small details and small nuances and mm. 
sometimes you even have to. So, you know, you gotta get creative with your work. You gotta you gotta know the tools in your toolbox, and then you apply them to the best of your abilities. When you draw a face, what element do you personally draw first? I draw the, sh the overall volume of the face. Um, and again, that's kind of a fake answer because I don't technically draw a face. I blob a face. You know, like everything I do is... Uh, <laughs> I, have a, I have a very specific uh, way of doing things, you know. I, I, I basically do this. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, here's what I get from the, these. I get um, I get myself the ability to kind of immediately go uh, into 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 like general expressions of uh, you know I'm not I'm not um, I'm I'm not really um, not that big into drawing. I'm more of a painter slash sculptor, you know, and uh, that's uh, that, that that part of me is usually what dictates uh, my approach to uh, drawing <laughs> as in I'm, I'm just kind of feeling uh, forms and finding directions for forms you know and then once I've kind of figured it out um, I take it from there you know <laughs> <laughs> like um, I call I call it cheesy as it may sound. I call it drawing from your heart, you know, drawing uh, <laughs> drawing from your gut feeling. So, you know, once you got that, it's easy to kind of you know figure out everything else. Um, and this is this is one of the big big my one of my big problems when people ask me, you know, I was like, well, can you tell me how to do it? You know, I was like, well, no, I can't because well. This is how I do it. How fucking useful is this to anybody, you know? <laughs> With this approach, you know, I can I can produce a lot of stuff really fast, you know, <laughs> and it's you know it's gonna it's gonna look like these are characters that give a shit about things, you know. They're gonna they're gonna be concerned about stuff. They're gonna be you know worried. They're gonna be happy. They're gonna be all sorts of stuff, you know. And um, my priority is always to catch it, you know, in the in the earliest stage of everything, you know, <laughs> because uh, if I catch it there, then it's easy to, you know, to polish it all into something that's um, presentable <laughs> and uh, still keep uh, still keep the essence of their expressiveness and everything, you know. So it's all about you know understanding. Um, it's all about understanding uh, what you want to do with the thing uh, while knowing um, the fundamentals. And I can't, uh, I can't say this enough, but uh, without fundamentals, it's not gonna work. You know, if you don't know 
what uh, the structure of face if you don't know any of that stuff you won't be able to uh, you won't be able to draw without references um not i mean and i'm not even saying that should be your final goal like it really shouldn't uh, <laughs> this is um uh, working without reference for me is, uh, you know, it's it's a re it's it's a result from necessity. Um, as a comic artist, like yeah, sure, I could spend my time and get myself a get a bunch of references, and uh, I could take them on my own, or I could do what most people do and just find photos on the internet and just wink, wink, nudge, nudge my way through it, you know. <laughs> but uh, that takes time. Time I could used to actually draw the thing you know by the time i find my references i could have drawn four panels so um, you know instead of uh bothering with that i slowly but surely took my time to actually learn to draw things and sculpt things without references sure it's not always going to be perfect but you know what it's going to be my kind of imperfect as in every mistake i make will have my signature on it you know <laughs> It's not gonna be perfect, it's, but it's also not gonna be. Um, it's not hopefully gonna be boring, you know. Because <laughs> um, make no mistake, you know, if you just copy a thing, no matter how photorealistic it may be, it's not really gonna have a lot of soul, except for the soul that the model brought in from the get-go, you know. And, and um, if that model is just staring blankly, well, you know, that's all the soul you're fucking working with. <laughs> And uh, if you can if you can work uh, on your own if you if you can work without a reference, you know he, you're gonna be you're gonna be able to make characters that people you know can relate to people can um, give a crap about. <laughs> and uh, like I said, you'll make mistakes. You make a shit ton of mistakes. You're gonna build your whole f palace of knowledge on nothing but mistakes. But <laughs> At the end of it all, you're going to wake up one day and you're going to realize that you're capable of doing things you, you never could have dreamed of. And once you realize that, there comes a sense of freedom that you couldn't imagine. You know, you literally come to that point where somebody's like, can you draw this? And your answer is always, yeah, I can. <laughs> In fact, the only times you actually actively cringe is when you have to draw something that's specific and requires you to find reference. Like... This is one of the big reasons why I, as a comic artist, prefer uh, DC over Marvel. <laughs> Their cities are made up, so I can just draw a city, you know? Like, I know what a city looks like. I've been to cities. Um, I can draw general cars. It's like, what car is it? A car, you know? <laughs> but uh, sometimes the script says, you know... This guy is driving a Ford Datsun this specific year or, or whatever. I don't know cars, so I don't think Ford Datsun is a thing. <laughs> but my point is, you know, and he's parking it in front of this very specific building in Washington, D.C. And you're just like, fuck my life, why don't you, you know? <laughs> it's, um, you know, it's... It's, it's it becomes your one point of annoyance where you actually have to draw things that you have to find references for but uh, you know if if you can uh, if if you if you've put in the time if you learn to draw things without references well then you know <laughs> generally 99% of the time when you don't have to actually look for references for things that you have to draw that actually exist you're going to have yourself some good time you know and um, don't get me wrong it has its flaws like I said um, um, you are you are learning one mistake at a time you know so you know the end results aren't always going to be ideal in fact there's going to be a lot of your works from the past where you're going to look at it and you're going to be like my god this is absolute garbage and when somebody happily shows it to you and tells you that it's their favorite work you just you just want to scream at their face going like are you fucking blind you know but then you remember oh right i used to think this looked uh, okay to to show uh, so i guess it's not that they're blind it's that you are slightly overly self-critical mm. Another usual side, uh, another usual consequence of this approach, you know, you like you will develop a level of self-criticism that, um, well, it makes everybody else's critique completely irrelevant. Um, 
one of the things I, I, I get asked sometimes, like, are you open for critique? And I'm like, not really. Not because I don't think you don't have a good point. It's just you're kind of wasting my time because trust me, anything that you have to say, I've already told myself a bunch of times. You know, you you get you get to that point. It's like it's like oh well, you see you 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 have a flaw in your characters because of this. I'm like yeah, I I know, I know. It's on my to do list, but believe you me, it's a long list, so not everything gets uh, not everything gets improved immediately. <laughs> And um, you know that's the thing. Um, it's it's a learning process. It all it's always gonna be a learning process. But <laughs> speaking as somebody who has gone through that process for about twenty years, it is worth it and it is rewarding because there's something very special about a feeling you get when you you know start making a drawing and you realize you know. Shit, I'm 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 actually capable of doing this now. How? When? Why? You know, pretty sure I wasn't able to do that yesterday. But you know, you're perfectly capable of, capable of doing it today, and uh, so you do. <laughs> and um, that's that's your life, you know. You go from one art block to another. You go through breaking one wall at a time, you know, because. Um, you're going to find yourself working on a thing over and over and over again for endless, endless, endless series of hours without making any progress. And you're going to be losing your mind. And then you're just going to quit it for a while. And uh, little do you know, but the uh, human brain is a curious, fascinating thing. Because the moment you quit it, that's the moment when you start giving your brain time to compress data, to defragment itself, to make connections between things learned and to strengthen those connections. <laughs> and then one day you come back to it and you're like, shit, how how am I how am I fucking doing this now? What what is happening? You know? <laughs> and um, you know. Then you're like, oh, I guess I can do this now. Awesome. I'm gonna start learning this next thing. Damn it, I'll never learn this next thing. You know. It's it's a process. It's a process that's pretty much endless you know it's gonna last until you die but believe you me you're gonna die being able to do things you weren't able to do you know like like earlier so yeah worth So where would you recommend a person start learning forms, forms from a sculpting perspective? I don't know. Nobody taught me. <laughs> it's it's a sad thing to say because it's, it comes down to this: um, if nobody ever taught you, you're not really you don't really have a you know you, you don't really have a teaching method to borrow. Which again is my big problem when I'm trying to teach people things, and it's like how how do you even approach it? Because there's this whole science to teaching itself. It's like I I always kind of have to rely on nothing but anecdotes, you know. <laughs> so you know, the way I learned my sculpting is you know one failure at a time. Again, it's it's the it's the method of self-taught people, you know. We learn from failures. <laughs> However, uh, I do have a clear advice on how to approach that nowadays, and that's you go to YouTube. 
and your Google sculpting tutorials. Uh, it seems uh, like a silly cheesy answer, but it's very much a true one. Um, there are people who have a lot of experience doing it and a lot of experience teaching it, and they are posting their content online for free. <laughs> It's all there uh, at the tip of your fingers. Like you just need to grab it. You just need to, you know, you just need to commit. And um, I guess that's the hardest thing sometimes is making that uh, decision to actually get into it, to commit to to a thing because <laughs> you know it's gonna take time. You know it's gonna be painful because my God, you're gonna feel good about your work for about five minutes and then you're gonna fucking hate it again and again and again. <laughs> and um, it's going to take you a long time until you come to uh, certain realizations about yourself. Uh, until you start accepting uh, that, yeah, it's not ideal, but you've been yourself for a long enough time to understand that it's going to get better. It's going to keep getting better. <laughs> and it's at that point where um, usually you're going to find uh, critique to be useless because you've developed... Uh, a strong enough insight into your own process to recognize, you know, it's like, yeah, well, this is going to improve in this way or that way. And it's going to improve at this and this pace, you know, it's like, you know, your own pace of improvement. You've, you've, you've done it for long enough that you can recognize that, you know what? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, so far I've been focusing on faces. Now I'm going to be focusing on hands. How can I tell a story with hands? How can, you know, how can I do this or that? And you're going to learn it one segment at a time. No, no, no. Hey, you're going to hate it after five minutes. Uh, you're going to you're gonna basically love it at most for five minutes before you start hating your own work again. Yeah. Because it's, it's one of those things. It's like you're going to call it finished. You know, and then you're gonna you're gonna move away from it. And um, funny thing, um, like when you're working on a piece for long enough, you get this image fatigue. Um, your eyes are so used to it that you don't even see the mistakes anymore. You know, it's just kind of like eh, it's whatever. Mm. And uh, this is why this uh, flipping is actually a very useful thing, also because it. Um, it circumvents the image fatigue. It helps you gain a new perspective on your piece so that you can actually recognize the thing that needs to be fixed. Like in this case, I've been staring at that helmet for long enough to the point where I have stopped uh, comprehending its form <laughs> and uh, kind of lost uh, the symmetry. So I have to, you know, I have to re reestablish that. <laughs> Also, another thing that I like doing in my work is I like to build forms through light sources. This is something that I've kind of adopted over time uh, by uh, practicing with 3D um, uh, programs. It um, it enabled me to um, actively uh, control uh, the illumination on my pieces uh, by just... Uh, mm operating as if my mind was a 3d renter so i'm like you know it's like okay main source of light is coming from here okay but she's also she also has her battle energy stick whatever the name was it right now that i'm completely blanking on <laughs> so you know it's gonna have like an energy discharge coming from it and it's gonna be an intensely blue bluish kind of a you know thing so i'm gonna I'm gonna have that affect this side of uh, her you know so it's gonna affect this arm it's gonna affect this side of her chest piece it's gonna affect her cloak from underneath here so that side of the cloak isn't gonna be getting uh, the uh, you know the subsurface scattering that's gonna happen you know through this side <laughs> so you know you kind of start building it one element at a time and 
you start recognizing, okay, this is this is the interesting thing that I can do with this, and this is the interesting thing I can do with that. <laughs> and uh, it's even more fun when you're working uh, you're working with something that has uh, a lot of different kinds of uh, you know materials, fabrics, uh, metals, anything you know. <laughs> Uh, the sunstone st uh, statue never got produced. Also, for anybody uh, watching this on YouTube, um, I never really finished these um, stream fan arts uh, because, well, first of all, their whole sole purpose is just for me to kind of wake up and get myself into a working order. <laughs> and second of all, um, these aren't my own characters. I don't have, uh, you know, I don't have a, I don't have any rights over the IPs, so you know, I'm not really gonna do anything with them. I'm not gonna make them into prints. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm gonna sell them as T-shirts, coffees, or uh, co coffee mugs, or you know, whatever. <laughs> so I really have no use for them. And second of all, I'm kind of really, really tired of uh, cheap knockoff uh, print sites uh, stealing my fan arts and then selling them as upscale JPEGs, uh, selling them at pri premium prices as premium quality. So you know what? If you still want to do it, you're going to have to finish the pieces yourself, you jackasses. <laughs> hey, you got to find your own fun in life. <laughs> Is it common to go absolute black for stuff? It's, um, depends on what you're doing, really. <laughs> Um, the, the only reason I use uh, black to kind of outline things is so that I can have my fo uh, foundation for um, ambient occlusion blending. <laughs> See, you can make a you know black stroke and then uh, mm. then you can blend it in uh, to kind of separate forms in a very nice, uh, effective and moderately realistic way. I'm not really trying that hard on this, but. Uh, <laughs> That's really its uh, main purpose for my own work, so... I'm working on a first indie comic and I'm doing it using digital painting only. I have a question, how do you decide where and when to use line art on a digital painting? I've seen you do it before and it looks great. 
I don't know where it would work or it looks crappy. Um, first of all, I would highly uh, advise you to not even bother with digital painting for a comic. But if you still want to do it, you know, go for it by all means. Um, the only reason why I'm telling you to, you know, trying to dissuade you from it is I've done it myself and uh, results uh, don't age well. You know, um, but again, I'm not here to tell you you're doing it wrong. Just you know, something that I've personally picked up over time. But as for where to use line of work and where not, I mean, it really depends on your own approach to things. You know, I I can't, you know, one person's uh, painted style is not the same as another. So <laughs> it's one of those things where, without actually seeing it, I can't, uh, <laughs> you know, I can't offer any uh, insight or advice. And honestly, I don't like. Uh, uh, not that I don't like, I just uh, I avoid uh, checking other people's unfinished stuff because <laughs> um, yeah, I've had my own experiences with that when you know my thing is just kind of trying to settle and people are like, oh, you should do this or that. I'm like, calm down, we'll get there. Oh, thank you, Echoblade. <laughs> but yeah, as for, you know, when to use line work and when not to use line work, it really is a matter of, um, a matter of uh, your own personal tastes, you know. <laughs> like, for instance, when it was something like Ravine, I predominantly didn't use line work because, well, I was going for painterly realism with expressive stylishness to it, with more or less success. But, uh, you know, when it's something like sandstone, I tend to do it very much the opposite way, you know. <laughs> it's all line worked except, uh, you know, like one of the things I, I do is... Um, I'll avoid line work on uh, backgrounds as much as possible because I want my characters to stick out. You know, they, I, want, I want them to separate themselves from the from the background so they get the line work. Uh, it's pretty much the animation approach. You know, how how in a Disney cartoon you'll see, you know, the background is a lushly painted thing, and then you know, you have the characters in the foreground with simpler shadows and simpler everything because that needs to be animated. <laughs> It's something like that for me. Um, so th that's pretty much the method I choose to define my stuff. Uh, but beyond that, um, like there are things that, for instance, when I'm drawing, uh, one of the things that you, I will usually do <laughs> is I'll pick and choose what I'm going to outline with actual ink and what I'm going to do with my actual shading layer. So let's say, you know, Let's say I'm drawing an expression, uh, a face making an expression, you know. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw my, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna draw my characters, uh, you know. They're making some sort of an expression, so I'm just gonna go through it, you know. I'm gonna do a quick uh, <laughs> lay down of uh, whatever, some colors and stuff, <laughs> and. Uh, One of the things I will always uh, avoid inking personally, and this is kind of a bit of a staple of my own approach, <laughs> is I don't outline lips. You know, you have people who would, you know, now just go and outline the entire entire lip, and it works. Don't get me wrong, but personally, step backward and step backward. <laughs> I will instead just kind of do my outlining of lips, but just you know, applying a different color, and, uh, you know, so the only thing that I will outline is going to be the, the, the separation between the lips. <laughs> this gives me uh, all of the info I need without um, adding too much line work onto, a, onto the drawing. <laughs> uh, I will do the same thing, like, let's say, you know, I'm drawing, I'm drawing uh, now elements of the expression. Let's say, you know, I want the uh, crease here. Fine. This is a strong enough crease that doesn't really 
intensively age up my character because there's a, a sort of a rule in comics it's like you know every line you add to a face adds a year so but let's say you know now i want to do proper expression works well i'm i'm not going to do it by just drawing it what i'm going to do is <laughs> no worry multiply there you go <laughs> what i'm going to do is i'm going to lay it down through just the use of shadows you know so i'm going to uh do do all of my I'm, I'm gonna let the shading do my work for me you know i'm, I'm not gonna i'm not just gonna uh ink everything i'm just gonna let uh, i'm just gonna uh, i'm just gonna let my shadows uh give my face uh the expressiveness i want from it you know <laughs> so like i said uh there's a bit of a science of science to it there's a bit of a feeling to it you know so it's like you gotta you gotta try it out enough times until you find your own way of balancing these things yeah. and then of course you know i'll combine that with the overall illumination let's say it's one of those harsh above lights you know <laughs> yeah. and then Let's say let's say there's a thing from below that's gonna bounce that light, so I can just do one of these. Mm. You know, that's the general idea. You know, you that's that's how that's my own personal approach to this. So if you found anything useful from it, by all means, help yourself. Mm. Also, for anybody uh, who is new to this and is watching this on YouTube, um, yeah, I, I usually kind of hit these segues on uh, my streams when people actually ask for some tips and tricks and stuff. So, you know, <laughs> don't be surprised. Oh, yeah, this has been live for an hour and 12 minutes. <laughs> Usually I try to contain my streams to about two hours where I just kind of, that's usually enough for me to wake up and, uh, you know, get myself ready for actual work. Now, I could actually draw every single one of her plates, or I could just uh, be <laughs> a bit more creative and just do one of these. Do, 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 do. Transform, flip horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Layer, 
push down. <laughs> right? For anybody uh, confused as to what's happening right now, <laughs> I am making myself a brush matrix. I do have some videos on that recently about brushes and how you can make them work with certain Photoshop filters. Uh, in this case, bevel emboss filter. Uh, okay. Crop. All right. Let me just um, yeah. just blend this into a fine transition. Yeah. And let's see what we have. Uh, edit, define brush preset. All right. Let's. Uh, well, which one is it? This one. All right. Shape, direction, All right, shape, a minimum, I'm gonna put something like this, <laughs> other maybe. All right, now let's see, layer, layer, new layer, <laughs> layer style, bevel and emboss, styles, bevel, Let's hit it to a thousand, size to one, uh, direction from here, let's see for now, and um, <laughs> and let's put fill to zero so that I'm just working with depth info, and um, let's see what we can do. Mm, need more, need more. Uh, <laughs> it's too wide, so I'm gonna do this. Edit, define brush preset. All right. <laughs> Direction, okay, trans. Okay, let's give this one a try. If you can't make it act the way you want it, you can always be a dick and just do this. First of all, I don't need a layer effect for this. I am going to use this. All right. Layer. Duplicate layer. <laughs> Sometimes you got to do things the hard way. Duplicate layer. <laughs> this is a good method to use when uh, your brush is just not conforming to a very complicated uh, angle or shape. Uh, so you can always just flat out make your own pattern. No, not merge visible. Merge down. Layer, duplicate layer. Mm. And I 
think one more and that's gonna be enough of them for any need that I might have. <laughs> Layer merge down. All right. <laughs> well, I have my pattern now. <laughs> I can copy it. And um, layer, new layer, layer style, bevel and boss. Do, 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 do. Oh, wait, no, what am I doing? Not stroke, bevel and boss. Mm. Depth up, size one. And uh, this will stay for now until I'm done setting it up. So. What I do now is I make myself a nice selection with the absolutely wrong lasso tool, like an absolute tool. <laughs> All right. Edit. Paste into. Uh, why you know Bevel and Boss? There you go. <laughs> and now. Too much of a sample for this and I don't need that much so I can just <laughs> Ew. <laughs> trust me all of this fiddling is gonna be worth it I think <laughs> <laughs> and that's one more important lesson for you in all of this is, you know, don't be afraid to try things and fail. Sometimes you will fail. Sometimes you're going to find yourself a new method to get a thing done. That is the mantra of the self-taught people. was bugging me. <laughs> now, um, one of the things I usually do when I when I apply these kinds of filters is, you know, 
I don't really want them to overstay their welcome. I will do the thing I'm gonna do myself, you know, my... Uh, let's do this, uh, let's put it like this. Two. <laughs> no. And then what I do is, let's say I'm happy with this, even though I'm not completely done with it, but fuck it, I don't really care. Uh, merge down, and um, now that it's merged, it's editable completely. <laughs> what I do is, I will simplify it, because I don't need all of this information. It doesn't match with the rest of my drawing here. It's oversaturated with uh, <laughs> details that I really don't need to that extent. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce some... Um, and introduce some colors into it more so that I can get a better result uh, overlay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it some shape, some you know, some <laughs> I'm gonna reflect some stuff into it. Multiply. I'm gonna color, 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 color. Hmm. And then I'm gonna do my, uh, let's do some vivid light uh, to get these um, hmm. highlights here that I need. It's all very sloppy right now, uh, but it's here for, with a purpose. And that purpose is, just a second, let me just add some of this also, because I did say there's a big boom somewhere, so it's reflecting on her shoulder. <laughs> now, the reason why I did all this right now is because I don't need all of these details to be this kind of pattern feeling. I, I need them simpler. I need them to rematch my drawing more. So what I'm going to do is now is I'm going to go into artistic cutout. <laughs> And um, here I'm gonna just, uh, you know, I'm gonna sim simplify things a bit to give me um, the feeling of the pattern with some light elements that I need in it. But that's gonna be pretty much all there is to it. You know, I'm not, I don't need everything from it, just enough. Same will happen, you know, with every part that I do. And then in the end, you know, I can pick and choose where while I'm finishing, you know, it's like, okay, so now I want my, you know, I want to, I want to increase some accents on things. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do my, <laughs> my linear light and I'm going to increase, you know, the illumination on a few scales here because at the end of it all, you know, it's all about creating the overall feeling and not, you know, have one thing that's super, super detailed and then everything else just kind of falls back. <laughs> so, like I said, um, a lot of this stuff uh, that I do, my methods are basically methods of somebody who has to do a lot of work on a tight deadline. So... You got to find your own ways to do things effectively, you know, get things done and have them be detailed enough for, you know, professional production level. So that's what you get from my streams. That's what you're going to be getting from my videos. These aren't your, um, you know, fresh introductions and me teaching you how to draw. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to teach. Uh, but... For those of you who have already been doing this for a while and, you know, you, you kind of have an idea of what you want from your work, my stuff is a decent way of kind of reminding you of some tools in your toolbox, you know, it's like, <laughs> I'm here to kind of point you to, you know, it's like, oh, you're doing this well, here's another way you can do it very fast, you can get some fast effects, uh, because let's say, you know, you want to be a professional, you want to be a concept artist, you want to work for video games, you know, <laughs> you're going to have to draw a lot of things on a tight deadline and they won't be interested in seeing it look perfect. They want to see it look effective. 
and that's I think the name of the game for me is effective so you know <laughs> now that I've added some colors into this I can do the same thing you know I can filter cut out the thing except I'm gonna have to retweak my cutout because the effect uh, has drowned off all of the dark so filter <laughs> artistic cutout and then I'm gonna give it another level and there we go <laughs> you know and from this on I can keep on building you know I can get my highlights again and stuff like that where I need them to <laughs> but generally it's it's doing the thing I wanted to do and that makes me happy <laughs> <laughs> new layer now another thing that I can do is let's say I want some patterning on her helmet <laughs> layer style bevel and emboss and I'm just gonna use bevel to give me some depth information that I need uh, okay so I'm gonna give it depth I'm gonna give it size to one and I'm gonna I'm gonna give it illumination direction from here because I pretty much want uh, I want my um, <laughs> Layer, new layer. You know, I want my light to come kind of from here. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, there are two things I can do. One, I could just kind of, um, <laughs> I could do one of these colors and then uh, use, you know, kind of just draw in some patterning and weaving and whatever not. Uh, let's see this. And And of course, um, I can change my light source to be a bit more in tune with everything else. So I'm gonna do it with something like this. <laughs> and um, yeah, <laughs> I can do you know stuff. Except in this case, I kind of wanted to. I always thought Big Barda's helmet kind of had a feral vibe, so I'm gonna I'm gonna play up on that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Normal. Actually, no, her thing goes uh, <laughs> like this. Now I can also add some drop shadow to that to kind of further separate the forms. I don't want to for it to have size, but I do want it to have distance. Size uh, distance basically just copies the layer and just creates it as a shade layer. And then you know, uh, if if the size is zero, you're gonna have the exact same size of your 
layer itself uh, repeated as a shadow. But if you give it size, you know, it's going to keep adding more and more to it. So it's going to, like, it works in some situations, not in not as well as in others. <laughs> but distance, distance will tell you how how far it's going to remove it, how many pixels it's going to remove it, dependent on the angle that you chose. <laughs> also, I don't want, uh, I don't want that shadow to be that intense. <laughs> there we go. Let's see the effect once I drop it. Uh, still too intense. Okay. I don't want this whole thing to be overly, you know, strong. So I kind of, I want to gain some control over it. And uh, I want to drop shadow to have a little bit less intensity. <laughs> And now I can actually apply a control layer over it. Uh, I call it a control layer because self-taught people, we have to make our own names for shit. So <laughs> basically what I do is I do a layer, new layer via copy. I copy the entire helmet and then I give it a bit of a cutout so that I uh, purge some of the detail work from it. Because uh, I don't want everything to be there. You know, I want some things to kind of yeah, get lost in it. So I just uh, use some co opacity to control the amount of details I want on this, because mm. uh, this this is not this is not the final stage of rendering. So I want this to still be vague enough so that I can you know pick and choose where I add my final highlights and my final you know mm. tune-ups. It's a nice little method for you to, uh, you know, to have some control over um, where you're gonna, you know, have your uh, focal points and uh, saturation of details. So I found it useful over time. <laughs> Could you give me a tip on skin texturing? What do you mean skin texturing of what specifically? <laughs> but yeah. Um, well, and the boss is a very versatile filter. It does what you need it to do. To do. And if you combine it with some other filters, uh, you can have it uh, be a part of your workflow in a way that's going to speed up your work and give you what you need without it completely taking over your piece. You know, <laughs> so you know it's one of those things that um, the more you do work with it, the more you realize how important it is to use it sparsely and when needed. And also when needed, you know, you're gonna you're gonna because it is a perfect filter, and by that I mean is um, it does element, it does things that you you're unable to do to that level of rendering, you know, and as such, it's gonna clash from the level of rendering you have in your piece, which is why I tend to use these simplifying methods where I can take what I need from the filter itself, and then you know combine it with my own work uh, so that I can match the level of finish. <laughs> Well, there are pores like highlights or rim light that allows the pores of roughness of the skin to be seen. I don't even bother with that anymore, personally. Like, um, it's the level of details that's absolutely useless to me. But uh, you know, <laughs> when when you want to use those, it's I mean, there's very simple methods to achieve, you know, <laughs> highly detailed skin textures. 
um, you know, from from making your own skin texture brushes and you know combining them with elements. Let's say here. Let me let me do a quick one. Yeah. Layer new layer. So yeah. you know, let's say you really want to do a highly detailed skin. So we're gonna use a patch of skin. Let's say under the eye. So you know, you're gonna do your basic shading, basic rendering of shapes. Uh, let's just do a quick uh, setup here. <laughs> I'm using the eye because you know you get some really good uh, wrinkles and textures around it, so you can just do do the thing really fast. And what am I doing? Rectangle tool. What a dumbass. Yeah. So <laughs> let's say you know you're building up your thing. You do you do your do your whatevers. <laughs> and uh, let's say you know you've you've done you've done your work you know you've done your <laughs> your shit. What am I doing? You've done your shading, you've done your rendering, you've done your colors, and um, yeah, now you're you're all about that texture work, you know. <laughs> so what I'm I'm still on the wrong thing. All right, cool. Size, dumbass size. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've now drawn our eye, blah, 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 whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we want to do some texturing. So uh, simplest ways, of course, would be to make yourself some brushes. Um, some, uh, okay, let's, let's go with several methods. One method is you're not going to go overly deep in the details. You know, you're just going to go, I'm going to just put it on the next layer just so, so that I can easily remove it. <laughs> <laughs> You're just gonna um, you're just gonna work your way through the important forms. So you're just gonna you know you're gonna give it uh, the highlights and uh, where it needs to, and you're gonna keep things simple but effective. You know, so you're not gonna you're not gonna go crazy on it. You know, you're gonna keep yourself um, from overworking a piece because. You know, let's say it's a comic piece, it doesn't really need everything. Or let's say it's an illustration piece, but it's you know <laughs> you're not gonna you're not gonna draw every pore because you're not gonna be able to maintain the amount of detail through the entirety of the piece. So you're gonna work smart, you're gonna go like, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna imply my shapes, I'm gonna imply my pores, I'm gonna imply my uh, wrinkles, you know. So you you would do something like this, you know, where you where you wouldn't just uh, go nuts you would just kind of give it a hint yeah. then of course there's the next stage you can you can go like yeah but you know i actually do have the time i'm gonna do my fucking pores and shit and wrinkles so then there you have multiple things you could do you can go new layer <laughs> multiply you can make yourself a very simple brush uh, image where is it there. <laughs> Let's say you make yourself a very simple brush where you're gonna do you're gonna do one of these. Layer, new layer. That's when when I start feeling the craving for my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna make one of these. You're gonna you're gonna really um, do some softening and rendering on on the cross on the crossings of, of these things <laughs> all right you're gonna filter blur gaussian blur that thing a little bit more all right and then you're gonna make that into a brush edit define brush preset all right and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna shape that thing flip x flip y <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna give it some spacing you know you can also, uh, if you want to, you can give it some angles, whatever. 
And then you get yourself your small fucking skin things, brush, whatever. Oh shit, I, I forgot that I wasn't uh, on my brush tool. Wow, I am really sloppy right now. Ah, eh, fuck it. Uh, let's just uh, save that as a brush then. Uh, new brush preset, there you go. Wow. <laughs> So now you have yourself that new multiply layer. You're gonna take yourself something subtle, and um, you're gonna start, uh, you know, you're gonna start working on a prop with a proper tool for a chance. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you're gonna start. Uh, you you can do one of these, but let's say this isn't what we're after. You know, you can reduce opacity. You can, yeah. But let's say you want this, but you know, you don't want all this shit. So you can actually do one of these layer style bevel and emboss. <laughs> now, let's say, you know, your light is from above and I put this beveling from up above and, you know, it doesn't really look good, you know. <laughs> And especially, you know, you have this black as your shadow uh, sh uh, color. And you don't really want black for your shadow color. You want something that's more, you know, blooded. Uh, you're going to want to set this up to whatever the color of your illumination is. <laughs> However, what you also want to do is, considering that this brush is this depicting the uh, things that are going in, you know, the indentations, the little micro wrinkles and pores, it makes no sense for you to have the light coming from the same direction because then it's basically making these things pop out. So what you really want to do is you want to do it the other way around, you know. And then you can, you, know, you can even, you can, you can reduce the amount of fill if you want to. You know, so you can kind of, you can play around with it, you know. And all of a sudden, you start, uh, you start being able to build up things on a really stupid level where you can. Where you're never probably gonna find it useful, but <laughs> you know, all of a sudden, that that bevel brush, that bevel filter starts getting a whole new set of uh, abilities. And hell, you can even duplicate it for an even deeper, you know, feeling. So all of a sudden, you know, you're getting some real, real fucking crazy wrinkled business happening here. <laughs> you know. And then, you know, you can flatten it, you can add more, where you can actually add, you know, like fucking pimples and moles and what whatnot, you know. So, really, it does come down to how much you want to, you know, invest into it, like how much it's actually useful. Because that's the true question of it all, you know, is like... Uh, uh, actually, this one. Mm. Layer, merge down layer merge down you know how useful is it to, for you to have that kind of a rendering on your piece you know <laughs> because then you can you can go even crazier you know i've actually had my own previous brush that were that were made for exactly those purposes and i don't use them ever these days you know yeah but uh, i used to have this one this one's for instance one of the brushes that i use for dinosaur skin <laughs> where is it, where is it, where is it? Ah, uh, man, I haven't used these brushes in ages, so I don't even remember where each of them is. <laughs> but uh, I think you get the general idea. Uh, oh, yeah, there you are. <laughs> yeah, I used to use one of these babies. Layer, new layer, layer style, bevel and emboss. All right, I'm gonna put the shading with this. I'm gonna put the light to something like this. Depth, size one. <laughs> yeah, and um, I'm gonna flip the illumination. Oh yeah, and considering uh, I don't need the fill for this, so, you know, you can do crazy things if you make, if you make a proper kind of a brush for it, you know. <laughs> yeah, then you can really just 
lean into things. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I, I want it, I want it, I want some like warts and shit and whatever. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you can do. Problem is, um, it's usually useless. You know, like you can do it, but um, it's not gonna do much for you because, you know, layer merge down. Let's say you have all of this, you know, it's like, well, what is it really achieving? You know, you're not really, uh, or just, you know, it's not gonna, like, it's, it's, it's not the level of rendering that's ever gonna be useful to you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, because once you actually get into, into, you know, reducing the size of it and everything, you know, until it's actually fitting on the rest of the face, you know, this whole thing is gonna start looking kind of like a noise. Now, don't get me wrong. Some good use of uh, light shadow, you know, form adjustments. Like you, you, you'll make this work. But it is such a, it is such a pointless level of details that uh, generally I would advise not even to get into it because when you get to a level of detail where where you're drawing pores on the skin. It's at that point, it's like, are you going to be able to catch up on that level of detail on everything else, you know? <laughs> That's my point. That's really why I'm kind of sounding a little bit negative on the idea of uh, texturing the skin, you know, texturing the skin pores. Not because it can't be done, by all means, go for it. You know, if you're, if you're going to be one of those illustrators that are going to go, you know, into a piece and do every single element to it, it's like, yeah, of course. I mean, I've been that before. And like I said, being self-taught, you know, you kind of, you kind of find find it's best to pick your battles, um, art, artistically speaking, because otherwise, <laughs> you know, you can you kind of like, this this is all fine and dandy right now. You know, it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw every, you know, I'm gonna draw cracks in in, in the pupil. Everything's just like I'm I, I'm gonna be that guy. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw absolutely every little piece of it. I'm gonna make it so realistic but at the end of the day you know it's like you know i'm gonna get to the close and i'm gonna be like ah oh, or or i could just simplify it here and here and here and then you have a piece that you know that's kind of all over the place where you you can't control the level of details <laughs> and um, there's something to be said about level of details like you can intentionally you know over detail a thing so that you know the rest of it kind of uh, falls back so you can actually control the eye of your viewer that way that there, there's legitimacy to that i'm just saying uh use it carefully you know see uh, try and match your level of details on the skin with the level of details you can uh, accomplish anywhere else and then build from that it's like all right i want this thing to be this detail and that thing to be that detail you know <laughs> that's pretty much the best advice i can give you on that you know it's like it it's, it's easy enough to get those details, you know. <laughs> Hell, sometimes you're just gonna make, you know, a simple thing like a pr j just a brush that's made of s a couple of specks, like right here, you know. <laughs> Let me just uh, show you the actual thing. It's... I'm of course using it on the wrong tool. Of course I am. Wow. Anyways. <laughs> You know, let's say let's say you have a brush that's made something like this, you know, just just a few specs. Yeah. Uh, shape, flip, flip, angle, and then I can add some color dynamics to it, and then I can just use yeah, you know, I can use one really light color, and the, the other one is gonna be yeah, you know, <laughs> something like this, and then I'm gonna do yeah. You know, I'm gonna do some maybe hard light or something to you know spec it up a little bit if I need to kind of salt and pepper that thing you know <laughs> give it even more of a texture you know just kind of build it up because most of this stuff is like you you don't really have just one brush one thing that's gonna solve it but if you have a few of them that do the job right oh then yeah you're gonna you're gonna go far with those things <laughs> Yeah, and then image adjustments, hue saturation because I've made the zombie apparently, so saturate it a little bit. <laughs> and you know, there you go. You get yourself an eye with like textured environment, and apparently it's a human 
dinosaur hybrid, but fuck it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if you're trying to uh, find the balance between cartoonishness and realism, just remember Shrek, okay? You don't want to go too much detailed on that skin because otherwise you get into Shrek territory and then just looks uncomfortable sometimes. <laughs> Uh, okay. Oh, so yeah, uh, it's about to be. I'm about to hit the two hours mark here, so I think I'm gonna stop it for now. And you know, next time I'm gonna do something else proper. Probably, it's kind of a shame that I didn't even properly define her hands or anything. I might actually just do a quick work on that, just so that so that it doesn't turn out to, so that somebody doesn't go like. Oh, look at him, look at him. He actually doesn't know how to draw hands. He just baited us this whole video. He just extended it and extended it and extended it and then, you know, he didn't have to draw hands. Ha ha ha. What a god. How hands work, right? One of these days, I gotta do a video on hands and the and their importance to storytelling. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a sloppy job, huh? But that's fine. By the way, are you still doing Switch? Nope. <sighs> Dead book, bad sales. <laughs> That's the thing with comics, just like TV shows. If people aren't watching and if people aren't reading, they go bye-bye. Because -bye. <laughs> people making them need to pay the rent. And unfortunately, you know, mm. 500 people reading a comic or 1,000 people reading a comic is not enough for a comic to survive, no matter how much we'd like it to. Mm.
and there we go i think that's gonna be it for today i'm good i'm good and ready to actually go to work <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm gonna focus on even through Patreon. I'm gonna focus on things that actually, you know, have an audience. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make people pay on Patreon for comics that you know only a few people want to read. That that at that point, you know, it's disrespectful to everybody else. So you know. Uh, anyways, yeah, I'm gonna wrap this up for today. Thank you all for being here. <laughs> One of the day, these days, I may actually pick up one of the half-finished pieces and actually finish it on stream. That would be interesting. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all. And see ya. <laughs>